And Martin, it's not every day in Celtic TV we get to come to a movie star's home, so first of all, thanks for having us. No problem, welcome to the Costa del Greenock. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to ask you a lot of things about Celtic here, but the first thing I need to know is, where does your love of Celtic come from? I think where everybody it comes from who your dad supports, you know what I mean? And um, being, being from the West Coast, I think uh, the majority of people are Celtic Rangers, you know, my family are just all massive Celtic fans, so my dad, my granddad, my brother, you know, much the whole family are Celtic fans, so that's probably where it comes from. So when you're working abroad, do you ever get asked that though? Like, why did you choose Celtic? You have to try and explain that. It wasn't really a choice, was it? It is, that's, I don't think, but I think that's with anybody, with any team you support, I think. I mean, there is something, I mean, I played that, I was a charity hang the other day, and that soccer thing, and we were talking, uh, all the kind of people had to say who their team was, and I mean, I suppose I'm from Greenox, it's a bit different, but it, it did amaze me, the amount of Londoners that were Man U fans, and that kind of is a bit of a weird thing that, that's obviously a choice because, but I think any proper true Celtic fans, you don't really get a, um, a choice for a lot of people. I'm lucky I was just born into a team who I love and, and are actually pretty good. But for a lot of people, it's more a, it's more a burden than anything. You know what I mean? The teams you support, but uh, says it's it's not really an option. So you're fortunate then to, uh, to be a Celtic fan. That's the well, way I suppose I'm I'm new, but when growing up, I think me being born in '84, sort of by the time you're talking. 90, when I was 6, I could probably come into like, understanding what football was, is probably the one of the worst periods of Celtic's history, so um, it, wasn't a, it wasn't an early start, but even, but the thing about those times, even like when, that was bad years, but it was when Tommy Burns and Maggio stuff, it was one of the most exciting times of being a Celtic fan. What's your, your earliest Celtic memory? My earliest Celtic memories, well, probably the best ones is I've been at the games, and I, I, I got told I was a jinx, and I remember it was standing, and I wasn't actually, I wasn't allowed in the jungle at the time, but I was took down at the front, and Carol Muggleton was in goal and Wayne Biggins was up front. That's how long ago that was. It wasn't exactly our, our most stellar of teams. And uh, Dougie Arnott scored, I think, for Motherwell to beat his 1-0. And then we got back to another game and then Craig Brewster scored for Dundee United. And I think we drew that game and then that was me on a year ban from uncles it took me. It says I was a jinx. Do you still remember that? Your, your, your own memories of watching Celtic win the 1995 Scottish Cup? I can't big Pierre. Heater, bang, bullet. It was a belt, I say, because it meant everything. I mean... I was what then? I must have been ten. I was ten years old, and um, but we had never won anything, you know, was in my memory. I mean, it was for us to beat again. Just, again <laughs> I went to see us beat Barcelona not that long ago, and but to think us beating Airdrie was such a huge deal. It was massive. It really meant everything to us. I remember us all running about the field just outside, running about going mental. You know, it's um, it was a special day that night. It kind of. Just for us as well, you know, sure we could win something, you know, as a guy, because I'd never seen Celtic win a trophy or pick up a trophy, you know, I think the last one, when we had won it before, I was four years old, um, so it was a good day. So what got you past the band then, because I've, I've been subject to that myself when I was growing up as well, apparently I'm a jinx as well. I think it was just at that point, um, then the new stadium, I think Hamden, Hamden wasn't a great year for us, you know, when we were placed there, but then with the new stadium we come in, uh, it was a Christmas present or an early Christmas present, my dad got me my brother season tickets. Uh, so for the next eight years or so, we were kind of moved the books. The stadium was getting built, so we were moving about with it and um, stuff. So um, and then a Neil came. Well, obviously, the bold whim came in. Doctor Joe. Cause I remember that I was one of the great ones as well. I mean, under Doctor Joe, when we won five one, and everybody was going after nut because Rangers had shelled out a few million for a thirty three year old Colin Henry, and we shelled out uh, a couple of hundred grand for a thirty three year old called Blue Bow. And everybody was cracking up because they were saying that's the difference in the clubs, so that's the money they're paying. And look how that turned it. And the Belgian, I think everybody said, why the hell is he playing this match uh, up front? And he scored two absolute beauties. And uh, a wee man's going down is probably one of the best players in their history. So um, it's, it's been a lively for a few years I've been there. Has that been one of your best periods? I know it certainly has Miami, you think, when Lobo arrives. And as you said, it was totally written off before they even kicked the ball. Before he even kicked a ball, and I even, I've looked into that a bit just because he was that good. You know, with both feet as well. You're like, how how did he only come to prominence at that age? And apparently, two double. He was on the verge of moving to Barcelona twice, and twice broke his leg because he was so gifted. You know, and I've never seen anybody so naturally talented. What was that decision like for yourself then? Because you know, I think you were selling yourself short. You were quite a talented footballer, but then acting just did it arrive I know, from I know, nowhere. But or? Then I think the reason I talk it through is because a lot of people talk it up, and it's. Like I had the choice between being an unemployed actor or another year on a YTS at Morton. You know what I mean? It wasn't exactly Real Madrid or Spider Man. Um, but you know, I was lucky, and I think I mean I made my. I was lucky enough to make my debut, and it was a weird season actually because Morton, who are a, a great wee club, and I've got a brilliant wee support and stuff, and and they're so up and down. But that year was particularly bad because 
um, the club were in danger of going out of business, and uh, and there was just so much infighting in the club, and it was just it was actually it wasn't a nice place to be for a young guy. You know, it's not first year professional, and the manager didn't speak to the assistant manager, and they didn't speak to the captain, and it was just it was a hard place to be learning your trade. I actually felt in some ways I went backwards as a player just being there because it was just it was just such a bad atmosphere at the club, and you know I'm glad they're back up on their feet now, but. I think that made it easier as well um, when they said that because they offered me another year and um, uh, but at the same time my acting career was taken off so I went to football I mean it might have been in different circumstances I mean I miss it every day you know I mean just a banter with the lads and at the end of the day you're just actually getting paid to have a kick about but uh, I think I made the right decision. So you don't have any kind of what if moments uh, no, even though you're all, successful because I think as now. well like yeah, I mean you've got to be kind of aware of um, not your limitations in some way, I don't mean to be negative about it, but I knew, and I mean, it might sound daft, but I think football's even a more unstable living than acting right now. You know, it's, clubs are going at the wall, whoever thought Rangers would have went the way they did, Hearts are doing, Hibs are relegated, you know, it's people losing their jobs left, right and centre, and so unless you're a Premier League player or something, then I don't think uh, it's a very stable living, and to be honest, I don't think I was ever going to get to that level. What about this, this special pub in America you've told us about that's usually stocked by some of Celtic's more famous supporters? Uh, Jocks or Daly's, uh, Culver City. Um, it's, it's actually, it's not that, uh, it's just a, a great wee pub, you know, and um, it's, I says you've got a quite, I don't know what it is with the actors and being Celtic fans, or probably good actors I'd say, uh, but a majority of uh, uh, people I know or, or friends I have who are, who are actors from Scotland are all Celtic fans and we all find ourselves at one point out in Hollywood chasing the dream and there's a, there's a crack in me boozer we all meet in to watch the games and, and the good things over there is uh, a lot with being the 12 o'clock kickoffs here it's usually a 4 o'clock kickoff over there I think 4 or 5 and it means you can go from a night out straight to the pub so it's it's pretty good so see when you're away do you still get a sense of that passion the Celtic supporters people who go that little bit extra just to make sure they still see the games ah of course I mean I found it bizarre over there as well like um, obviously you go to get the big games and stuff but literally that pub's packed if we're like um, Hamilton at home you know what I mean it's, it's four o'clock in the morning I suppose for a lot of people as well but because it's not just it's just a normal pub it's not like just a it's not like an actor's pub um, so there's guys who have just uh, emigrated to America and it's a connection with home, you know, and it's, it's a great meeting point for people, you know. So as soon as you're in the pub, you see somebody, hi, how you doing, where are you from? Oh, I know somebody from there. And before you know it, you've got a pal over there, you know, and it's great. It's a great way of meeting, especially in my job. I mean, I do love it and stuff, but you do travel a lot. And it can be it can be quite lonely at times, you know what I mean? You end up in these places and you go from hotel to, to set to thing and there's nothing. And you walk in at this pub and as soon as you see somebody be a Celtic tap on, you know you can just go over and hitch up and have a pint and watch the game.